Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what me and Chris are up to today. So in today's video, Chris is going to be making some blanket letters, some decor letters, along with the cute little dish towel ones since we're getting into that Thanksgiving holiday season into Christmas, you know, all those cute little decorative towels along with I make flower sack towels. So yeah, so in today's video, he's going to share the process of how he makes these ladders. And then of course, at the end, I may put my little spin on my little bling and painting them up and getting some, maybe some antiquing wax on them. So stay tuned, guys. In this video, Chris is actually going to be making a few different styles of ladders, but the basis of the ladders are all the same. Either he'll start off with a one by or he'll get some two by fours and cut them down to the size that he wants. And then yes, we, our Home Depot doesn't always unfortunately have the nicest pieces of wood so you have to pick what pieces you want and have to decide. But when it comes to de decorative ladders, I notice a lot of people like that rustic. So when there's chips like this, it's no big deal. Even though that one was a little bit on the extreme side, you don't want anybody getting splinters just by picking up a ladder. So now that he's got that clean cut, we usually make six foot ladders as our normal blanket ladder. So he's just measuring off what he needs to cut. On the top piece, he will make a straight cut, but then on the bottom piece, he'll give it a slight 15 degree angle and that'll help it sit flush against a wall or any kind of surface that somebody wants to lean it up to. Then now he's just gonna go ahead and make a matching size. And yes, you'll notice the flip-flops in the short and I, shorts and I know that it's winter, but it took me a long time to get to this video to edit it. <laughs> the first letter he's building it is going to have seven eighths inch dowels. So what he's doing now is he's marking off how far he wants the steps of the letters to be apart so they're all even. That way he knows where to drill out evenly on both of them so they line up. Now when it comes to the drill bit, you want it to have a little bit, just a little bit, slight larger than what the dowel rod is. And as he's drilling in, he wants to make sure that he's got it down at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch so that it has something to hold on to you in case, you know, there's supposed to be decorative ladders, but you never know if somebody's actually going to actually climb on them. I know when my kids were little, they probably were like, ooh, a ladder, let's climb on it. Now, funny story is, is I actually, the best price I can find on dowel rods is in this craft section at Walmart. They are just under $2 at this time of videoing. Who knows? Right now I've looked and they've been out of stock. But, yeah, you know, I'll take my $2 dowel rod and we can always come up with different items to use as the ladder steps. So he's just cutting them up evenly not to waste any of the dowel rod. So a little bit of tight glue in each one of the holes to make sure we, like I said, I, we like these letters to be good and secure that they're not gonna just fall apart. So for one more level of security, he taps in a little tiny nail just to make sure that these two pieces are not going to be coming apart. And then a quick overall sa sanding because when it comes to the dowel rod ones, we stain it, paint it the same color. And sometimes when you have that raw, really rough wood, the paint doesn't take and look like the same. So just a quick one, these one buys are always a little bit on the rough side. So just give them a nice sanding. Even if there's chips or gouges out, just still sand it so it's smooth. So when somebody's touching it, it doesn't, doesn't owie their hands. 
Definitely that sanding just gives it that nice finished look, especially when he sands on the tops like he does. This is the part of the latter video that I had to wait on because he had already done that one because we get asked a lot about how we make the blanket ladders. And then going into the holiday season and knowing that ladders sell really well for us, that, hey, why don't we have all this hoard of spindles and leftover pieces apart? Some are given to us, some I thrifted. This would be a good opportunity to make all these little cute little decorative towel ladders and some spindle ladders. So that's what ended up making our video a little bit longer because there wasn't much on just a plain ladder video, but who doesn't like to see old pieces of wood, old spindles put into a ladder? It's the same concept. You just find your piece of flat wood for your sides or what have you. And then you just find your drill bit that coordinates with what the size of the spindle or the piece of wood that you're going to be using for the slats of the ladder. Depending on your slats and your pieces of wood, sometimes you're going to need to clamp them together to make sure that that bond happens. And these littler ladders, it was kind of hard to get any kind of a brad because you didn't want to split that old wood. Sometimes when you try to nail in that really old wood, a nail will split it. I have three basic colors that we have when we sell ladders, black, white, and a stained kind of a barn wood finish. So the easiest way to do letters, if you can, is to spray them because those slats are not much fun at all. My stain ladders, I don't know if you can do a watered down antiquing wax mi mixture in a sprayer. Hmm, anybody knows the answer to that? Nope, I'm going to have to do it by hand. So I like my watered down version where I have a quarter cup of antiquing wax in a pickle jar this is the small regular size and then i do a little spoonful of the ink and then i fill it up with water and i stir before i use it every time now that tones down that sometimes depending on what wood you're using the waverly antiquing wax to me has a warm goldy tint to it so i like that little bit of that black just gives it more of the aged look that i'm going for Actually, I like it because the two species of wood, what we get for the sides and what we get for the slat, when I would do the just the straight antiquing wax, it definitely, I could tell a difference. But when I do this aged mixture, it blends in perfectly. Because we put all this aged wood, I had to rethink. I couldn't just go in and do a whole bunch of antiquing wax and some whites and paint and some black paint I had to go in on these individual ones that we added spindles to so I'm like okay well these are already white I'm not so I'm just going to go in with straight antiquing wax and do the sides of this I think that's definitely I like that white and wood together <laughs> My plan was just to leave the spindles as is, but after I got that antiquing wax on there, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to put a coat of Waverly's white chalk paint just to freshen them up, and then I'll go back in and sand a lot of it off. I just love that crisp white. <laughs> and I'm going to go back in and seal that white chalk paint in with some Verithane finishing wax. And then after that was so painstakingly to do all those little slats around all those little spindles, I'm like, so what's easier to wrap them in plastic, then tape, and then spray them? Yep, so that's what I'm like, you know what, I don't want to hand paint these anymore. I have my sprayer, so I'm going to get these sprayed. If our buyers only knew how much work actually went into making 
it's easier actually sometimes to redo a piece of furniture than it is to make a whole bunch of ladders when they're looking at the price of these. So now I'm going back in on the black ones. They are dry. I'm sanding and distressing them. That's a look that I like. And then I'm going to open up that paint so you know it. Yes, I'm going to be putting some antiquing wax on these. The white ones will get the same sanding to distress just a little bit. It's that natural, very light wood that's going to show through. So just a 220 sandpaper. I like to make sure that they're nice and smooth to the touch. And then after I got them all sanded, yep, a coat of Verithane finishing wax. That just seals and protects your paint and just leaves it feeling very soft. So thank you for watching today's video. Oh my goodness, yes, this is the season. Hopefully blanket letters start selling again for us because we really haven't had many, we haven't had any ladders unless I thrifted them because the, the lumber was, well, yes, it was too high. So yes, so now I will, I would like to keep that cost down for our consumer, for our buyers. So yes, you know, I don't know what you all sell blanket ladders for, but that's about, we tried raising them up a little bit and then they just sat there. We raised them, put them back down and yes, that's when they sold. So you just have to know your market. So, and I just, I love my blanket ladder and I love little places to just decorate. So I hope that these sell well. And if you make these already, let tell me down in the comment and how they sell for you and what you make them out of. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Your kind compliments, your kind comments, your tips that you share. And of course, that like that lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they recommend us. Thank you so much. And if you're new and checking out this kind of content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. And you can see what me and Chris are up to. Bye.